Okay, the biblical truth of our hymn, number 63 in the lesson. What a wonderful Savior. <coughs> Elisha Albright Hoffman. And number 61, when we did, Are You Washed in the Blood, are the same often. Wonderful, outstanding hymn, this one. is. It's a short story, but it says much. Now, there are originally six stanzas. The one I have has only four. And stanza one, Christ has for sin atonement made. Stanza one deals with the redemption work of Jesus Christ. Christ has for sin atonement made. Jesus said, I'm the way. There's no other atonement for sin. But Christ Jesus, no earthly man with sin can atone our sin condition. Now think about it for a moment. I'm a sinner. Okay. We'll take sinner Joe. Joe's a sinner. And Joe goes to a church. And Joe goes to the priest of his church. Who's a sinner himself. Joe and his priests are sinners for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Joe tells the priest his sin. And a sinner priest is going to resolve the sin being a sinner himself. That's ridiculous. That'd be like going out and say, my car is filthy. It's dusty. It's got pollen on it. I live in Florida. And it rained, and it, the rain has left particles of dirt and dust. And I'd be like me telling my daughter, all right, I want you to go out and wash the car with mud. You ain't going to get clean. It's going to get filthier. And when Joe comes to the man, priest, and says, well, here's my sins, he's sinning against God because he's not brought his sins to the Lamb of God, which take away the sin of the world. He's trusting somebody who is not God. That's a sin. And that priest is sinning because he's taking the offering of Jesus Christ alone and making the God, Joe be deceived to think, oh, I can abstain sin. So Joe and his priest have added more sins where Joe thought he was going to get rid of sins. And there's only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. There's only one that can resolve our sins and the tone of our sins, and that's the blood of Jesus Christ. And what response do we have to Christ has sin atonement made? What a wonderful Savior. Because my sins have been atoned by God, Jesus, I am not going to hell. And if my sins have been put under the blood after I am saved, if I confess my sins, he is faithful and just to forgive me of my sins. When I stand at the judgment seat of Christ, them sins are atoned. They will not go through. The, they won't even be there. What a wonderful Savior. That whatever I put to the blood of Jesus, asking God through Jesus Christ, it's gone. It's forgiven. It's cleansed. What a Savior. You will say, Stiley, he did this against me. And I made it right with God and I tried to make it right with the person. And you can't say, well, look at that sin. What sin are you talking about? As far as the east from the west. We are redeemed. The price is paid. Redeem means to buy back. I lived in Connecticut, and Connecticut was when you go get a can or bottle of soda. However, you got, you know, individual or in a case or a six pack of soda, you would pay five cents for the cans and for the plastic bottle. And the next time you went to the grocery store, you could bring those cans and bottles back and get your nickel back. That's redeeming. I. And humans were a child of God before Genesis 3. God created us in, in, in his image, body, soul, and spirit. 
man sinned against God and we became the children to father the devil. John 8, 44. And God says, listen, I know you're a child of the devil. And you're going to hell. Yes, Lord. I'm talking about my own experience. April 21st, 1987. I was told I was going to hell. I believed it. I was told I was a sinner. I believed it. And God says, okay, <clears throat> you can stay with your father, the devil, and go to hell. No, Lord, I don't. There's absolutely nothing you can do. But if you come to my son, and you put your faith and trust in the gospel that Jesus Christ suffered and died, according to the scriptures, and was buried, and arose again the third day according to the scriptures, you put your faith and trust in that blood atonement, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the world. You will not go to hell. I will adopt you as my son. I will give you my Holy Spirit. And my Holy Spirit will be your comforter. It will dwell with you for all eternity. You will have the fruit of the Spirit. If you put your faith and trust in Jesus, I am offering you this pardon. What do you have to say for this pardon I'm offering you, Stiley? I'm guilty, Lord. I want it. What can you say to that? What a wonderful Savior. The price has been paid, not by priest. Not by rabbi, not by pastor, not by baptism, not by works. But it's been paid by the Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. What a Savior. The redemption work of God is, if it's under the blood, it has been repented of, and sincerely, God, I am sorry, and please forgive me. And help me in future uh, times or, or occurrences. It's gone. You say, you know, you did good deeds. I don't do good deeds. The good deed and the good merits have been done upon Jesus Christ, upon the cross of Jesus. Stands in number two. We'll look at the, the reframe after. I praise him for his cleansing blood. Stands in two is about the blood. Now, if you have a modern Bible, a non-King James Bible, there is a possible fact, true, that your Bible has removed in many, some, uh, maybe all, some, all, or a few cases of the blood of Jesus. Now when I grew up and I was first saved in 1987 going into the 90s there was a thing that there was the bloodless religion. They had removed the blood of Jesus Christ. Today in the 2000s it's a salvation without repentance. But, like I said, when I got first saved in the 90s, was they were removing the blood. And according to Acts 20.28, 20, the blood that ran through Jesus, the blood that redeemed me, the blood that made atonement for my sins, Acts 20.28 20, is God's blood. He purchased me. Paul told the Corinthians. And he purchased me with his blank if you got a modern Bible. If you got a King James, he purchased me with his blood, the blood of God, the blood of Jesus, and you're wrong when you think Jesus is not God and God's not Jesus. Because that blood that flowed through Jesus, that blood has purchased and redeemed and paid the price is God's blood. It's Jesus' blood. I praise him for the cleansing blood. There's no other blood. Now there's an organization out there. And it's a different organization down here in Florida. But you give blood to them. And they say something about life and blood. <coughs> you can get a transfusion. It can extend your life. But it doesn't give you eternal life. 
And the blood of Jesus Christ not only atones, not only does it redeem, but it gives us eternal life to be with God the Father forever. And not only that, but it also it cleanses us of all unrighteousness. I praise him for the cleansing blood. And what do you got to say about the cleansing blood? What a wonderful Savior. What a wonderful Savior. That God manifested in the flesh. God himself came down this filthy, sin-cursed earth and said, I will suffer, I will die, and I will come out of that grave for that sinner. That reconciled my soul to God. Re God is was at wrath. God was at infirmity. God was against us sinners without Jesus. You cannot say God loves a sinner who has rejected Jesus. That is not true. The only way to bring the love of God to a man that is sin is for him to come to Jesus and believe on Jesus with the heart. And confess his sins and repent of his sin and tr tr put the full trust of Jesus Christ and Jesus' finished work, then I'm washed. I'm redeemed. I become a child of God. I get the Holy Spirit to comfort and dwells with me. I get my name in the last book of life. I get to go to glory. I get to go to New Jerusalem. I am absent from the body and present with the Lord at death, if not the rapture. And then I am reconciled to the holy, almighty God that said, be holy, for I am holy, but I can't be holy because I am a sinner, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And how do I get right with God? I have one mediator. It's not Mary. It's, the, it's Jesus Christ. There's one mediator between God and man. The man Christ Jesus and what made God happy with me and what made me get back to God in fellowship is not me. It's not works. It's not a church. It is Jesus Christ. I am not at enmity against God no more. John says, he that has not the sun shall not see light, but the wrath of God. I don't have the wrath of God no more. Why? The blood of Jesus. And woe unto you if you have a church, if you've got a Hindu, if you got something, a Bible that does not have the blood. Because if you do not have a bloody salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is God, of God's blood, you do not have atonement. You do not have redemption. You are not reconciled by God except by the blood of Jesus Christ. The sinless blood of Jesus. Stand to three. And let me look here real quick. Alright, because there are six original stands. One of these. Alright, the original, the one that I have, it stands of three. Is, let me look over here real quick. Hold on. Alright, we get this straight. Stands of three. Okay, let me try to get this. Alright, no, gotta get four or five. Alright, stands of three. Get confused here. Mine's out of whack. All right, stanza number three. I apologize. You know, I don't know why I just don't do all the stanzas. They got they got hymns in here not even about Jesus, and when it comes to a wonderful, they can't add two extra stanzas. But stanza number three, he cleansed my heart from all its sin. Stanza number three is about the reign of Jesus Christ. You know why he says he cleansed my heart? Because Jesus said out of the heart comes adulteries, murders, fornication, lying, stealing, thefts, uncontrolled thoughts. Jeremiah says the heart is wicked above all things. Who can know it? All our sin doesn't come out of our head. It comes out of our heart. And with the heart, man believes on the righteousness. You can't have a salvation that cleanses your brain and be saved by God. You can't have a, a salvation that's going to dope your mind and have salvation with God. 
You got to get to the source and you got to get to the root of man's sin. And that's man's heart. So in my heart, I sin. If a Christian were to put out a cuss, oh, where did that come from? That came from your filthy heart. That's where it came from. Listen, you're saved, but you're still a sinner. And the blood of Jesus Christ that atones, that cleanses, that redeems. That reconciles. Is the one that cleans the heart. The original source of our sins in our flesh. It'd be no good to cleanse my hands of holding a beer can. Where the want of the desire of the beer can comes from my heart. I can chop off my hands and still want alcohol. So, Mr. Hoffman gets to the root of where sin originates in this wonderful great hymn and where sin is in the cleansing. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness of the source of our sins, the heart. Man, you could paste this right inside your Bible. But what do you got to say to that? What a wonderful Savior. Not only does he cleanse me of my sin, but he goes right to the foundation of my sin. And it's possible you take me. I used to smoke a long time ago. That was in my heart. The Lord has taken that smoking desire out of my heart and fed me with something that's holy and right. I have given up on alcohol. I have no desire for that alcohol. I mean, I could go into the hospital and be fed by a feeding tube and by IV for the rest of my life, and I may, and you still can get that sinful pleasure of wanting alcohol. I don't, because it's a heart issue. And a lot of people can't deal with their sin because they can't deal with where it comes from. It's not something a shrink can do. It's something that the Bible and Jesus can do. And a pastor that preaches the Bible. Your heart. So what do we say to that? What a wonderful Savior. And now he reigns and rules therein. And many a times, I'm sorry to say, we take him off the throne. I take God off the throne. In my heart. When I sin against him. And when I put my heart to serving God and doing correctly, then he reigns. He's in charge. And there are many times and we all have we, we're, we're put with that temptation. Here is something good and holy. Here is something evil and wicked. Who's going to be on the throne of the heart? And when you choose that which is holy and right, you've got God on the throne in your heart. You have overpowered the flesh to say, hey, my heart's going to do right. But if you choose that which is wicked and sinful and evil, you're taking God and say, God, Sit over there for a moment and let my sin take the pilot seat. God, you stay in the, co in the cockpit. God, you stay over there in the, in the co-pilot seat. But you let my sin sit right here in the pilot seat. Because I want to enjoy and feast in my sin. And that's wrong. But when God puts that, that, that rudder in his hands, the controls in his hand, and he has operation of all those buttons and all those gadgets and all those gauges, and he is the pilot. And you take your heart and your flesh and your lusty desire and say, get out of the cockpit and lock the door and let God control. What do you guys say to that? What a wonderful Savior. Not only did he save me, Savior, but he also is willing and able to guide me to live right in my life. And he's also... You don't want me in control? Well, I'll just step back. Free will. I have a God that says, I do not have a God that says, you're going to do it, and you're going to do it just like that. I don't care what you say. Do it. I don't have a God like that. And when you come to God and say, God, you know, I, I want to do right, Lord. I want to serve you, and I, I got this sinful desire. I know, Lord, God, God's like, really, you want me? Yes, I do. You want to go my direction? Yes, Lord, God, but... 
Alright, just sit back there and let me take the control. I'm going to give you the Holy Spirit and say, all right, you choose this. Okay, I'll choose this, Lord. All right, we're going to move on. All right, now this thing. Don't go that way. Go this way. Okay, Lord, let's go this way. And then the Lord's in control. All right, let's go. What do you got to say to that? What a Savior. All right, now here's where it comes. Stanza four. Now I come over here. Which I don't have, I have stanza four, but it's not the original four. Stanza four is his guidance. And it says, he walks beside me in the way. And he keeps me faithful day by day. That's not in this one. Why would you take that out? After I just told you about God being the, the pilot and not the co-pilot. He's the pilot. God walks beside me in the way and keeps me faithful day by day. That pilot... If he stays in that seat, he will take you from airport to airport. And he's beside you. He's there in the airplane. He hasn't stepped out. And this is a wonderful stanza that should not have been removed from this hymn. But you can put something to do. My eyes have seen the coming of the... Oh, throw that in the garbage and put this back in. And the guidance of the Lord is he walks with me and he talks. I know that's from another hymn. I know God talks to me. Oh, you ever seen Jesus? I've never seen him, but I know he talks to me. I know he deals with my sins. I know he tells me we're guided. And there are sometimes God doesn't answer me. There's things in my life, guys, like, just quiet. <laughs> Lord, where do I go? Quiet. <laughs> Teaching me patience and just all kinds of things. I don't know. And I don't understand. But when there's trials and tribulations and trouble, I'm with you. My wife's going through terrible medical things right now. Oh, Lord, my blood pressure. Oh, Lord, and my blood pressure is, I'm with you. My wife, you know, Lord, let, just ask for God's peace, the, the fruit of the Spirit. Yeah, there's turmoil, there's trouble. Just say, Lord God, your peace. It's there. It's available. I'll be with, I'm there with you. Jesus Christ ultimately had the most brutal treatment outside of any man on this planet from Adam to the last man ever to die or raptured at the great white throne judge. Of all men, Jesus Christ had the most brutal treatment ever that mankind can do. And he says, you know what? I cried at a funeral too. I know your pain. I had more worse pain. And I suffered pain as God. Job says, do you have eyes as I have? Yeah. And God can say, no, I don't, Job. But when Jesus Christ was born, and Jesus Christ died, and Jesus Christ was resurrected, God can turn to Job and say, now I do. God, I, I'm pain. I'm suffering. I got great pain. I know how you feel. Cat and nine tails. Thorns, bleeding, being nailed, suffocating. I know how you feel. Lord, all my friends left me. Oh, Lord God, I'm trying to serve you and I'm friends. Yeah, I only had one disciple and my mother at the cross. You know, when I told my disciples I was going to come out of that grave three days and three nights, you know how many of those disciples were there waiting for me? None. I know about people forsaking you. Oh, Lord, the world hates me. Marvel not the world hates you. Know that it hated me first. So, four that's not here is guidance. And then, number six, which we don't have. Six. Influence. I'm done being careful because to him, I've given all my heart. Amen. The world shall never share a part. Influence. That stands as six. I'm completely opposite, separate from the world. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. I don't have anything to do with the world but the gospel. I'm going to preach to you the gospel. I'm going to tell you how to be saved. I'm going to tell you you're going to hell and how to get out of hell. I got to make a living. But I'm not of them. I've given my heart and all to Jesus. 
And people are going to leave you. And you're going to need that guidance. You're going to need that God walking with you rather than man walking with you. And stands before that I have here is the power. Power. What power? Take a dead man and raise him alive out of the tomb. That's power. You know, you got these uh, Pentecostals running around. Oh, sorry, uh, let's see you raise a dead man. Come on. We'll go to any cemetery in any cemetery in the world. Just one body, okay? Just one body. I don't care who it is. Uh, it has to be dead over three days. Anybody dead more than three days. Raise him out of the grave. Come on. Jesus said, listen, if you have faith, faith in the grain of a month, you can tell that, month, that mountain to go jump in the lake or river or sea. Not, not that big. That would cause a catastrophic earth event if, if you were to move a mountain. Just take one body who's been dead over three days and three nights and raise it out of the grave. Let's see that power. Yet my God's all powerful to take a dead body and raise it out of the grave. My God is able that if I were to die, I'd be absent from the body and present with the Lord. If the rapture happens, whether it be dead or I'd be alive, I am going to the clouds. I have a God that has the power to never, ever have me lose the salvation. I have the power of God. The Holy Spirit says, I'll dwell with you forever. I have the power of God to say, you are my son. I have adopted you. I'm not going to ever get rid of you. I have a mighty powerful God. You know what God, you know what the powerful God said? Light, let there be light. Boing. Let the waters cover the earth to a certain point and let there be dry land. Boing. Let there be stars. Boing. Let there be a moon. Boing. I have a powerful God with the voice of his mouth. Something happens. You try it. Watch. You want to see how much power I have? Ready? I want a Whopper with large, with McDonald's fries large and a Coca-Cola. I have no power. You know how much power God has? Lazarus, come forth. <laughs> boing, boing. And Lazarus is all wrapped up. The guy had to float out. Something. You know how powerful God is? Uh, Mr. Whale, you want to spit my prophet out? Thank you. Over there. Spit him out over there. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Ass, Mrs. Ass, can you give a lecture and a sermon to Baal for me? Thank you. I really appreciate that. Ravens? Yeah, can you take some food and bring it over to my prophet over there by that river that's drying up? Thank you. Angels? My son's down in the garden. Will you go comfort him? That's power. Satan, you can do whatever you want to Job, but don't do this and don't do that. That's mighty powerful. He gives me overcoming power. And when we don't have that power is when we failed against God. You know, we go to the store. I see it today. Someone had it back. Love, family, faith, faith, something. You ain't got the faith. You do? Move that mountain. Raise that, that dead body. And yet when we get to eternal life, faith will be gone. The moment we die and see Jesus be absent from the body and present with the, that's no, the faith is gone. Because there is faith, the things, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. When you see Jesus, that's it, your faith is gone. But all oh, the charity survives forever and ever. He gives me overcoming power. You, you trouble, you problems, you got things going on in your life. God is able to get, not the doctor, not your husband, not your wife, not your children, not your money, not your job, not your car, not your church, not your pastor, not nothing but God can give you the power. 
Are you lost and going to hell? There's only one power that can save your soul, and that power is taken out of modern Bibles. It's called the wonderful blood of Jesus. It's sinless. What do we got to say to that? What a wonderful Savior. And triumph in each trying hour. It's all the troubles, all the problems, all the anxiety, all the all in all rest in God. But we get in the flesh. We sin against God by going in the flesh. It's all in God. This is not biblical. I mean, this is not scripture, but it's biblical. I would not say this is inspired by the Holy Spirit, but it's got the Bible facts and true. Now, a hymn, though, is not the Bible. Because we have done many hymns that are flops. But this one I rank up there, the top ten. And what would be our response? What a wonderful Savior. What if Elijah Hoffman asked us two hymns ago, are you washed in the blood? What would you do if you got a modern Bible? Are you washed in the of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting the grace? Are you washed in the Lamb? Are you washed in the in the soul cleansing Lamb? You sound like you you you're crazy, and that's your modern Bible that's not King James. And if you're a Jehovah Witness. And you don't believe God is Jesus and Jesus. Oh, what a. We are redeemed by the price of it. Oh, what a. What a. What. Jesus. My Jesus. What a. You don't have that wonderfulness of God through Jesus. That God is Jesus. And he's wonderful. His name is wonderful. The mighty counselor. The mighty God. Isaiah says. What about if you're Catholic? Oh, what a cookie Jesus is. Oh, what a cup of wine Jesus is. I think I'll have a second Jesus. Pocus, pocus, eat us, pocus. Here is the body of Jesus. That's not what God is. God is not a wafer. You cannot look at a box of, of mass wafers and see the ingredients. It does not say Jesus. Flour, enriched flour, whatever. Don't say Jesus. I have a wonderful Savior that is God and is beyond all human capabilities of doing whatever me as a man can get into trouble and me all the help that I have that I can't save my soul. I need God to save my soul. I'm saved. I'm going to glory. And God still be God wonderfully taking care of the messes I get myself in and the messes this world gets me into and the messes that this flesh and sin gets me in. What do I got to say to that? Oh, what a wonderful Savior. <coughs> One day I am going to be in a brand new body in New Jerusalem. No more pain, no more death, no more sorrow forever to be with my, my family that's saved. And those who have gotten saved by my by the ministry I've taken part in. And what can I say to be before God the Father and Jesus the Lamb before the throne forever and ever? What do I have to say? Oh, what a wonderful Savior. People have false intentions about heaven. It's all about that wonderful Savior. I am here worthy of the Lamb. Glory to God in the highest. 